Welcome to Beer Matters. My name is Gordon Tate and I've been involved in the drinks industry on and off since about the age of 17 as a marketeer, researcher and most enjoyably a beer taster. Several years ago I undertook the onerous task of assessing and reviewing the best beers available in bottle format from all the major suppliers and retailers. This led to the formation of an annual competition to choose the champion bottled beer in the Burton and South Derbyshire region. Previous winners have included Brewdog Punk IPA, Young's Double Chocolate Stout and last year's worthy winner Charrington's IPA from the Heritage Brewery based at the National Brewery Centre on Horninglow Road. This year, however, I have put the pedal to the metal and incorporated craft beer in cans. I noticed earlier this year that many of the leading supermarket chains had extended their range significantly to include the proliferation of new can beer products from the smaller breweries UK-wide. And so, for the first time, the competition winner will drop the bottle beer moniker and the winner will simply be known as the best craft beer of the region 2019. And so what did I discover? Well, Morrisons have always led the way with craft beers and Matt Goodley, their store manager, has always been very progressive in promoting their products in store. His particular favourite is Brooklyn Lager, which is actually um, a deep amber colour and flavour hinting apple pie and fresh dates. It's got less CO2 bite than a normal fizzy lager. However, my personal favourite is a beer called Roosters 24-7. It's brewed in Knaresborough, Yorkshire, and the name, as the name suggests, you can drink this beer anytime. It's extra hopped, American style pale ale. It uses a variety of American hops, combined with Nelson Sauvignon from New Zealand. It's bright, fresh, ultra dry, with a mouthful full of snappy grapefruit bite. And maintaining their excellent bottle beer portfolio, I would recommend Wild Gravity from the Bad Company of Dishworth, again in North Yorkshire. This has a lemon aroma, flory hopple bite, and a pleasing lighter finish. Sainsbury's store manager, Guy Swindles, is rightly proud of his beers and they have claimed the top prize on more than one occasion. Their range of craft beers has remained mostly loyal to the bottled variant. This year, I think their best offering is an own label American style IPA. This very sharp, very dry, very bitter ale is just what a good IPA should be like. Refreshing tangerine grapefruit tang comes via the American tactic of overhopping to enhance any flavours lost in the bottling process. It forms part of their taste the difference quality range and a little birdie tells me that it is brewed by our local heroes Marston's. Incidentally, recently on a trip to the United States, I was chatting to a guy behind the bar about IPAs and American IPAs are very popular over there at present so I asked him if he knew the origin and he uh, not unsurprisingly suggested that these beers came from India. I had to explain to him what we all know of course that IPAs originated in Burton-on-Trent and the name comes from when the beers were exported to India for the, um, Raj, for the British Raj and they were extra hopped so they could make the journey. So IPAs, India Pale Ales from Burton-on-Trent. B&M stores certainly have the smallest range of craft beers available but they are led by the excellent Oakham Inferno. It's brewed in Peterborough and it's sister bottle Citra having been voted champion beer just a couple of years ago. This one has gentle vanilla aroma, pale gold colour in glass, a lemony sharpness on the tongue and that leaves a very pleasing aftertaste. So Oakham Inferno from B&M. And so on to the National Brewery Centre. 
the site of the Heritage Brewery. Attempting to emulate last year's champion, Charrington IPA, they've come up with another hit, Massey's Golden Bitter. Described by them as a lager beer, it's pale amber in appearance, it is smooth and refreshing, but to my mind just lacks a little bite. Very pleasing nonetheless. Massey's Golden Bitter. The Co-op. They now have a much improved range of both formats. Stone Ripper in cans claims to be a San Diego style pale ale, but it is actually brewed in Berlin. Fruit salad on the nose with a slightly hazy oak pala. It's very bitter and thirst quenching with a more mellow lemonade finish. Stone Ripper. And a very unusual bottle by the name of Farmer's Belgian Blue, which is strangely dark pink in hue. It does lack a defi definitive aroma, but has a red fruit character with a spicy fruit finish. Now, beers dominated by fruit flavourings are not my personal cup of tea. I think that should be left to the cider market, but very interesting. And now on to what I consider the most unusual entrance into this year's competition. Beers of the World, based on Station Street, Burton, is the mecca of packaged beers. You can literally drink your way round the world with their impressive range from all around the globe. It's also now licensed with craft beers from the tap, so give it a try if you're passing. I sampled a Mexican beer called Smiroli. Wow. It's jet black, thick, smoky, bittersweet. My palate picked up licorice, cinnamon, treacle, coffee, black pepper and other spices. So, if you want a beer that has everything, and I mean everything, then this might be for you. However, word of warning, too much of a good thing, and at 10% ABV and a price to match, it's probably one for the connoisseurs. And so, the moment that I hope you've all been waiting for, the champion craft beer of 2019 lives on the shelves at Tesco's and it's a bottle. Lansdowne West Country IPA is brewed by Bath Ales deep in the West Country and is the perfect example, in my view, of what an India Pale Ale should be. So there we have it for another year. I hope you try for yourself some of this year's recommendations and I also hope you will join me for another edition of Beer Matters. My name's Gordon Tate. Cheers my dears.